When people are faced with the need for palliative care, that can be quite a difficult moment for the person and for their family. Death is part of life, making sure that the care that surrounds an individual is as good as any care that they might have received in the lead up to dying. My name is Jennifer Tiemann. I'm a Matthew Flinders Professor at Flinders University. I'm also a director of a centre that's called the Research Centre for Palliative Care into Death and Dying. While we know what palliative care is, and that's a health response to needs associated with the end of life, death is also a personal experience and it also relates to families and to communities and to societies. So REPAD is really about taking a 360 degree look at the systems, the experience, the lived experience of the person's last experience of life. Having high quality care provision, which makes them aware that they will not suffer, that they can manage symptoms, that their pain can be controlled, they can deal with the issues that are going to confront them over those last months or years of life is really important. There's several different types of research that are involved. There's research about what is best practice and what interventions work so that people can feel confident in the care that they're receiving. We actually run direct research projects with uh, different community groups to get their understanding of practice. We work with health professionals to understand their skills and their competence and where they need support and guidance. And they're all designed to be used by people who are either providing care or needing care. Hi, I'm Kate Swetnam. I'm the clinical lead for the end of life care team within the Department for Health and Wellbeing. The vision for SA Health is really the best health care for all South Australians. And so while they don't call out end of life care, it's, it's implied within the best for everyone. And we recognise that people might like to believe that we can cure death. Death is part of life. One of the pieces of work we did with SA Health, we applied for a grant to look at the question of what's the experience of families when an older member of their family has to go into residential aged care and will end up dying there? What's the grief and bereavement that they feel? We worked with them and then produced reports, which then led to things being put on different websites, including the SA Health website. So it's been a really exciting opportunity to partner with SA Health and to try and find solutions that will have statewide applications. Having this partnership means that we are actually able to pick up the broad aspects of community, what they're actually looking for, what are the challenges. REPAD have done a lot of work, not just in residential aged care, but in home care for aged people. And so that has actually given us great confidence in working with them. It's really important that we actually acknowledge that we can support people and get good outcomes for them. We've been able to demonstrate people access our resources we might have a million visits to our websites in a year, which is a lot of people who are willing to say, I'm willing to look for material around death and dying. We see the impacts of the work that we do with that. And then we also get the personal impacts where people will come back with their stories and say, because I had access to this material, I could care for my mother at home. And I felt confident in being able to talk to her about what needed to be done and to talk to the health professionals about what was needed. An ideal future will have end of life care as the overarching umbrella so that we will have synergies between palliative care, advanced care planning and advanced care directives will be well embedded into the fabric of society and people will start to see the value of having these documents completed. Actually have it embedded into all our systems in general health care so that people go looking for those documents so that they're actually providing care that's congruent with wishes that people have identified. There's information that we need to make available to different parts of our communities, in different languages, in different formats where they can have it so that no matter who you are, you have the chance to be well informed about palliative care. I think there's also adapting to new evidence as we are growing research clinically, as we're growing it in terms of our community, research has to be shared and, and made known. So we don't stay as we were practicing in 1980, that we move with what we know to be successful approaches uh, in those areas. For me, an ideal future would be where our community can talk about death and dying naturally so that we can actually support the people in our community, where our family and friends are actually aware of the choices that they can make, that we actually have the capacity to engage and receive care wherever we are, those would be the things that I hope for in the future. Mm -hmm.